folks, this is uh, Paul Shirtliff, and uh, tonight I'm going to be tying a Borsher parachute. Uh, it's a parachute pattern for uh, Hendrickson's and Isa, Isonikias and uh, various others. Um, for the tail on this is uh, moose body hair, and then for the body is turkey tail, and it has ribbing of uh, thin wire from Semperfly and the uh, thorax is uh, super fine dubbing and the post is uh, Antron yarn also from Semperfly and it's got a few wraps of uh, a Hebert Miner dark uh, natural brown done. So <clears throat> get started on this. So for the hook I'm using is a, uh, a Moonlit Fly Fishing. It's an ML052. And this is in the number 14. Uh, the thread I'm going to be using is a uh, Semperfly wax thread, dark brown in 8 aught. And I'm going to start this right where I want the post to be. So I'm going to start the thread on the hook where I, right where I want the post. And I'm going to take a couple of turns, and then you can either snip or break it off. And then I'm going to come down here to about that point right at the start of the bend, and that's where I'm going to do the, uh, the tails. Now for the tails is uh, the moose, moose body hair. And I'm using the moose body hair versus the moose mane because the, the fibers uh, are a little bit thinner and they're not quite as long. They seem to be stronger than the moose mane itself. So I'm only going to take just a just a few of them, like maybe four four to five. And I'm just going to pluck those right off the hide. I don't even cut them, and then try to get rid of the little the wispy fluff that's in there, the under fur. Then you put that in a stacker just to even up the tips. Now for the tails on these, I'm going to go a little bit longer than the, the, the shank itself. Almost like one and a half. I tie those in with a couple of turns and then I'm going to go one underneath them just to kind of lift and splay them a little bit. And then I'm going to try to keep those the fibers on top of the hook as I'm wrapping back. And then I'm going to give my thread a clockwise turn just to tighten it, cord it up a little bit. A couple of turns over the top and then I'm just going to break those tags off. Now from this point I'm going to tie in my the ribbing material and the, the ribbing I'm using is uh, Semperfly's Fine Wire in March Brown. And I'm just going to start it right there and I'm keeping it on my side as I'm bringing it down right to the base and then I'm going to come back right to the start point again. Now for the body what I'm using is a cinnamon tip turkey tail and uh, I'm only going to take I'm only going to take maybe three or four fibers is all and I'm just going to pluck them from the stem Then I'm going to tie these fibers in just like you would with a pheasant tail, right by the tips. And then as I'm wrapping this back, I'm kind of I'm allowing it the uh, thread tension to bring it to the far side. And then I'm going to bring the thread with 
the turkey tail down together and what I'm going to do is make a turkey tail rope and I'm going to spin that on the thread just like you would a rope, a dubbing rope and then I'm going to wrap the thread and the turkey tail at the same time to create the body and I'm doing touching turns and this time I'm going to come one turn further than where I started the thread at and then I'm going to remove the excess now for the rib I'm going to counter rib that and that isn't going opposite the direction I was ra uh, wrapping And this is just for a little bit added durability. I'm going to a turn behind and then a couple turns in front. And now I'm in position for the post, but I'm going to helicopter the uh, excess wire off. Now for the post, what I'm using is this uh, Semperfly's Antron yarn in white. You can use other colors too. It comes in uh, several different colors. Uh, a light dun is a second choice. I like white because it shows up better on the water. I'm only going to take a piece maybe three, two or three inches long. And my tie-in technique for this is this is straight from the card. I'm not separating it or anything. And what I'm going to do is just set it on the thread itself, holding it with my finger. And then I'm going to come in with my other hand and grab the two together. And that way I have complete control over where I position this at. So I'm going to put that right there and it's just maybe at the two-thirds part of the hook. So that's one turn of thread and I'm going to come through with the second to hold it down. I'm putting some tension on that and then I'm going to come a turn in front and a turn in back. So my thread turn, my last turn was just behind the, uh, the post. And then I'm going to hold up and then I'm just going to come around the base of that. and I'm going to post that wing up, the parachute post up. I'm not going to post it up very high, maybe half the distance between <clears throat> the, uh, the hook eye and the, and, and the, uh, the length of the bare, bare shank. So just once up and once back, and then I'm going to end with my thread behind the post. Now I'm going to tie in my, uh, my hackle and I'm using a, a dark brown dun uh, saddle hackle. So this is it here. And so how I'm going to position that is, is I want the fibers to curve down. Um, so the feathers are, feathers are concave. They have different, um, they, they curve, they curve off the stem of the feather. So how I'm going to position that is, is I'm going to expose, I'm going to stand some of these fibers up, and then I'm going to expose a tie-in spot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to influence the direction that hackle is going to want to turn. By creating a, a by creating something that looks like this, and that way, when I tie it in, I've got enough room to tie in. So that's one one turn to lock it in. Two, and now I'm going to bring the thread behind the post. And in front of the the stem, and then I'm just going to stand them both up together and I'm going to wrap them around together and I'm going to post all the way up 
once and then all the way down. And now I'm going to take my thread and cover up the remainder of the stem and I'm going to leave it about half an eye width behind the eye. Now for the dubbing I'm using Semperfly's super fine dubbing and I happen to have a dispenser here and in the dispenser I'm using three different colors. I'm using a pale brown, a brown olive, a black, actually it's four colors, and a cream color. And I've just taken a little pinch from each and then I've mixed them together to get this color. So you can see the black and the cream and the pale brown. And so from here I'm just gonna I'm going to dub a small dubbing noodle, maybe two or three inches long. <coughs> I'm dubbing that pretty tight. So I've got my dubbing on and then I'm just going to use my finger and move it up just a little bit. And now I'm just going to start dubbing and I dub from the eye back in a reverse taper. So right there, right behind the eye. This is kind of a reverse taper. Now I'm right there at the back of the, at the front of the post. I'm going to come behind and fill that small gap. And then I'm going to come in X wraps to fill in any other gap. And then my last turn with the dubbing on the thread should end right there, just like that. And now I'm going to come around one complete revolution right at the base of that post. And then leave the thread on the, on the far side. And now I'm ready to wrap the hackle. Now because I positioned the hackle the way I did, or oriented the hackle the way I did, it will wrap the way I want it to with little effort. So I'm just going to come one wrap under the other, under the other. All the way down. I'm not even. I'm not counting. I don't know how many wraps there are. I'm not worried about how many wraps I'm making. I'm worried about um, just making that a, a nice full, uh, fully hackled fly. Now that's uh, that, now I've got to the base of the post, and I'm holding the uh, the remainder of the the saddle hackle directly away from me. And the thread's on the far side of the post, so what I'm going to do now is just take my thread and go uh, straight out, and then I'm going to come around. And as I come around, I'm going to drop that, drop the hackle down, and then finish that turn. Now the hackle is completely tied off, and it's out of the way. Now to whip finish, I whip finish around the post on this on uh, my parachutes. And how I'm going to do that is I'm actually just going to maintain tension on the thread and rotate my vise. And now for, from here I'm going to do a three, maybe four turn whip finish. And I whip finish by hand. And I'm going to come underneath there. So there's one, two, three turns. And now I'm going to close the loop with the bobbin. Now I'm going to maintain tension on the thread and just rotate the vise back around. And now I'm going to take the thread and the excess feather, hold them together, and then I'm going to remove both at the same time. Now, 
Now I'm going to come up and trim the, the post. I don't like the post super high, but I like it high enough to be able to visible. And I clip it at a slight angle. Then I rotate it around, make sure I didn't get any trap any fibers. Now to finish it off, I like to use a little drop of the uh, Loon water base head cement. I just put a little drop right there at the base where the thread wraps are. That soaks in and secures everything down nice and neat. And that is the completed Borcher Parachute. Mm -hmm.